What's up guys? Welcome back to Base MMA. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my breakdown and prediction for Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Shemaev. And before I get started with this breakdown, I just want to say, look, I understand that I got a lot of flack in my last video where I said that I had UFC burnout. And I know some of you guys don't feel the same way. And I completely understand that. I just had to, you know, express my own point of view, why there was a lack of videos, you know, why I just haven't been as passionate. And the truth is, it's just that I feel like the UFC is in a bit of a decline. I just feel like the fights haven't been living up to the hype. In my opinion, look, you might feel differently, which is totally okay. And I also understand the criticism. Look, a lot of people were like, Oh, you're a fake UFC fan. You're not a true fan. And to be totally honest with you, I also understand that whenever you watch something or do something a bit too much, you're just bound to get burned out and tired of it. So I completely understand that perspective as well. So I kind of took a step back. I understood that. Look, I'm a little bit burned out. Maybe I just need some space from watching all these fight nights from the prelims all the way to the main event to watching all these lackluster Apex cards. Maybe I don't need to do that. And one of the reasons why in the past I, I did not do that was because I was just afraid of missing any fight where there's an up and comer and I'm not aware of them, especially when I'm covering UFC and I just don't want to be behind uh, when it comes to some of these fighters. But to be totally honest with you, at this point, I'd rather just let those fighters move up the rankings and get big fights. And then once I do watch them, just go back and watch their previous fights earlier in their careers rather than me sitting bored as fuck watching a lackluster apex card i'd rather do that and that's what i'm gonna do going forward now with all that being said it's time to break down robert whitaker versus hamsa shemaev a great main event for a fight night and i'm actually very very excited for this fight i've been going back and forth on who's gonna win i think it's a very interesting matchup there's a lot of factors going into this fight for robert whitaker i think it's redemption for hamsa shimaev it's make or break i feel like every time hamsa shimaev gets a big fight we're like okay this is gonna be the test like against kamar usman we're like okay kamar usman's gonna be the true test against gilbert burns oh that's gonna be the true test and i feel like you know, even though he won those fights, he hasn't passed with flying colors. So I think this is the final test for Hamza Shemaev to really prove that he's as good as we think he is. Look, we know he can submit guys like Kevin Holland. We know he could submit guys like Ling Jing Liang. He could uh, knock out guys like Jerome Mershaw. But how does he perform against top guys of any division, whether that be the welterweight division, whether that be the middleweight division? So I think this is the final test for Hamza Shemaev and for Robert Whitaker, he's been a staple of the middleweight division. I mean, he's been the number one contender a lot of times. You know, he's coming off that win over Paulo Costa, where it was actually a pretty competitive fight, and we're going to discuss that in this video as well. I mean, he lost to Drikas Duplessis, which was a number one contender fight. He lost against Israel Adesanya. He's a former champion. So Robert Whitaker has a lot of experience going into this fight. While Hamza Shemaev, on the other hand, he doesn't have the experience of Robert Whitaker. But I'm also afraid to say that he's an up and comer because, I mean, he's been in the UFC for four to five years now. Um, he's had a very strange career with like moving up, moving down to the welterweight division, you know, fighting at 170, beating Ling Jing Liang and then fighting Gilbert Burns. And we all thought, OK, he's going to fight for the title at 170. Then the whole thing with Leon and Usman, they had their trilogy. I thought, OK, Hamza Shemaev is going to fight the winner of Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman three. But then he missed weight against Nate Diaz and then the UFC you know was like okay we can't really trust this guy to make 170 he has to move up to the middleweight division and then he can't travel to the United States to fight so Hamza Shemaev wasn't going to be able to fight last year up until Abu Dhabi so he was basically sitting out for 13 months uh, after not fighting after winning against Kevin Holland so Hamza Shemaev has had a very chaotic career and I think that's very relevant going into this matchup. The fact that, you know, consistency, he hasn't been fighting. He hasn't been active. Yes, he's very talented. He's one of the most talented and gifted fighters to ever come into the UFC. But he's had such a chaotic career. And maybe he has a lot of things going on in his personal life that it definitely, I think, has changed him a little bit. I just don't see that same hunger in Hamza Shemaev. And like I said, I do believe this is make or break for Hamza Shemaev going into this fight. So what do I think happens in this fight? Look, like I said, Robert Whitaker, 
This is redemption for him. Is he if he's able to beat someone like Hamza Shemaev, who's 13 and 0, still has a bit of hype. I, I definitely think that Hamza Shemaev has lost a bit of his hype, a, li- a bit of his aura. If he's still able to beat someone like Hamza Shemaev, Robert Whitaker could potentially fight for the title against an Israel Asanya, against a Drakus Duplessis, even though I don't think it's very marketable. I think if Robert Whitaker ends up winning this fight, I could see the UFC giving Sean Strickland the rematch with either Adasanya or Drakus Duplessis because it is a bigger fight. But still, to beat someone like Hamza Shemaev, who's very talented, who's 13 and 0, it would be very impressive. For Robert Whitaker, if Hamza Shemaev is able to get through Robert Whitaker and make it look easy, then Hamza Shemaev is undeniable to get that next title shot for the middleweight belt. So there's a lot on the line for both these guys. And how do I see this fight playing out? So this fight is very, very interesting because I think if you would have asked people, who do you think wins this fight before Robert Whitaker faced Drakus Duplessis, I think the majority of fans would have said that Robert Whitaker probably beats Hamza Shemaev. But I think if you ask them now, I think it's going to be a little bit more 50-50 in my opinion. And I understand why. Look, I, I think the blueprint to beat Robert Whitaker is already there. Look, he has a karate stance. He likes to blist. He's an amazing striker. And he's definitely the better striker here against Hamza Shemaev, who, yes, Hamza Shemaev has a solid jab. He has power, but he's low volume. I, I mean, he throws pretty good body kicks, but he's not a guy that's out striking you necessarily. He does have a bit of power. But definitely here, Robert Whitaker is the better striker and definitely going to be the guy with more volume on the feet. However, Hamza Shemaev has the grappling in his back pocket. But before Robert Whitaker faced Drakus Duplessis, a lot of people talked about Robert Whitaker as a guy that had, um, I mean, he does have amazing takedown defense, but as impeccable takedown defense as, oh man, Robert Whitaker can't get taken down. But after he lost to Drakus Duplessis, I felt like that narrative kind of went away. So because of that, I also believe that that was a bit overhyped. I I personally thought that Robert Whitaker was a bit overrated before that Drakus Duplessis fight. Yes, I did think that Robert Whitaker was going to be able to beat DDP, but I just thought he was a little bit overrated. And I think that Hamza Shemaev definitely has a path to win here. Look, the big question here is that we know that Hamza Shemaev is going to sprint at the beginning of the first round to try to take Robert Whitaker down. And even if he's able to take Robert Whitaker down, is he going to be able to submit him? We don't know. I don't know. I mean, Robert Whitaker hasn't really faced a grappler in a long time since Joy Romero, since his fight against uh, Choza. So it's been a long time since Robert Whitaker has actually had to use his takedown defense. And we saw in that fight against Drakus Duplessis, even though he was a, it was a trip more than a, a single leg or a double leg takedown, we saw that Robert Whitaker can get taken to the ground. And Hamza Shemaev is one of the best at getting your back and controlling you on the ground. But what happens if Robert Whitaker is able to survive that first round and Hamza Shemaev starts to gas out, right? That's where Robert Whitaker could start to have success in the striking and just outpoint Hamza Shemaev, the big problem here for me, the big problem for me here in this fight when it comes to Robert Whitaker is that it's a five round fight and I just don't see Robert Whitaker being able to finish Hamza Shemaev and that scares me. That scares me. For me to pick Robert Whitaker who I don't want to say the guy has pillow punches, but he just doesn't have a lot of power in the middleweight division. He doesn't have more power than Kamaru Usman. I just don't see him finishing Hamza Shemaev. And because of that, Robert Whitaker would probably have to win a decision, maybe win the later rounds. But I, I don't think Robert Whitaker fights with this very fast pace either. So I don't really see how he would necessarily gas out Hamza Shemaev. And we've seen that people are able to time Robert Whitaker's blitz. I mean, we saw that against Drakus Duplessis where he was able to land his jab and drop Robert Whitaker. And if you're able to get dropped by a jab, I definitely think that Hamza Shemaev here has potential to drop and hurt Robert Whitaker on the feet. But I still believe that Robert Whitaker is just the better guy on the feet. The thing that worries me is that he has no finishing threat, at least against Hamza Shemaev. I don't really see him hurting Hamza Shemaev unless Hamza Shemaev just gets super, super tired and gasses out. And then Robert Whitaker stands, uh, starts to land a flurry of punches and maybe he could uh, TKO Hamza Shemaev. But I really don't see that happening. And I think that all the advantages actually go to Hamza Shemaev. I could see Hamza winning by a decision, winning by a KO, winning by a submission. I also think Robert Whitaker isn't in his prime. He had a very close fight against Paulo Costa. 
I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I I think the pick is clear for me. I think I have to go with Hamza Shimaev. Look, I understand that it's a bit concerning, right? Because he gassed out against a short notice Kamar Usman. We saw that he dropped his energy levels after that second and third round. He just wasn't the same guy. He didn't have that same intensity. And I think that if the same guy shows up in this fight. I think Robert Whitaker will probably win the fight. The thing that concerns me is that it's a five-round fight. And even if Robert Whitaker has moments on the feet, if Hamza Shemaev has moments, and then also, okay, before I even talk about the striking, I worry a little bit because, look, for the first time in a while, Robert Whitaker actually has to worry about Ham about somebody's takedowns. And Hamza Shemaev has amazing takedowns, so maybe that makes... Robert Whitaker a little bit more hesitant on the feet because he has to worry about getting taken down, especially if Hamza Shimaev is able to take him down early in those rounds. That's kind of slow down Robert Whitaker. And because of that, I think that Hamza Shimaev could probably hang with that pace. So I have to go with Hamza Shimaev to win that fight. I just think he has more power on the feet. Yes, I think Robert Whitaker is the better striker. I think he has better volume. He has good oblique kicks, good jab, good right hand, good movement. He has a good karate blitz. But like I said, I think we've seen that people are able to time the blitz. Drickus Duplessis was able to do so. I don't see Robert Whitaker having the power to threat Hamza Shemaev in a five-round fight. I think Hamza Shemaev is very dangerous. I know he's very dangerous early on. People are going to point to the gas tank as one of the reasons why they're picking Robert Whitaker. And I definitely think that's valid. But I just think because Robert Whitaker is going to be worried about getting taken down, I think that's going to slow down the pace of the fight. And I could definitely see Hamza Shemaev having moments on the feet, maybe dropping him with a jab. Because Hamza Shemaev has a very solid jab. He has a good right hand. He has a good teep to the body. He has a good body kick. Obviously, like I said, Robert Whitaker is the better striker here. And he does have good takedown defense. I just don't think... I don't think his takedown defense is going to hold up. I'm going to be honest. I think Hamza Shemaev, some way or another, is going to be able to take him down, control him on the ground, maybe find his submission or land ground and pound shots, which are going to gas out Robert Whitaker here. I just think Hamza Shemaev is a little bit too dangerous in this matchup. I do expect a better version of Hamza Shemaev than the one that showed up against Kamaru Usman to show up here. But I'm going to trust Hamza Shemaev, guys. I think he's going to find a way to win. Look, Robert Whitaker has been finished. I mean, I want to say a year ago, almost a year ago, a little less than a year ago by Drickus Duplessis. He showed ways that you can beat him. And I just think the fact that Robert Whitaker doesn't have that finishing threat, it's hard for me to pick him, man. It's really hard for me to pick him. Yes, he can weaponize cardio. He definitely has better cardio than Hamza Shemaev. He could definitely outpoint Hamza Shemaev and maybe beat him by a decision. It could be a competitive fight as well. Maybe if one, some of the rounds, Hamza Shemaev is able to take him down, control him, land a couple punches. But then Robert Whitaker has more success with the striking exchanges. I could definitely see, it, see this fight being a close fight. But when you ask me, okay, who has more finishing uh, possibilities or more of a finishing threat? I just think Hamza Shemaev has way too much of a finishing threat. I think he could hang on the feet. He's going to be the taller fighter. He's going to have a longer reach going into this fight. I hope that Hamza Shemaev paces himself a little bit better. I kind of hope he doesn't rush at the beginning of the round and sprints to take down Robert Whitaker. I actually hope he's a little bit more methodical. Maybe being a little bit more methodical plays into Robert Whitaker's game. So maybe that's not the smart move. So I'm very curious to see how uh, Hamza Shemaev approaches this fight against Robert Whitaker. Is he going to slow down? Is he going to strike a little bit more and then go for the takedowns when he sees the opportunity? Because when Robert Whitaker does that blitz, that's a perfect opportunity for Hamza Shemaev to timely take down and take down Robert Whitaker. And because of that, I think that's going to slow down Robert Whitaker because he's going to be like, oh, is he going to punch me or is he going to shoot for a takedown? So I think because of that, I don't think Robert Whitaker is going to be able to be as comfortable on the feet as he typically is, as we see in his fight against an Israel Asanya or a Jared Cannon or a Kelvin Gaslam or a Darren Till, because here he actually has to be worried about getting taken down by a Hamza Shemaev. Look, like I said, I think Robert Whitaker has the better striking in this matchup. I think Hamza Shemaev has the power advantage. He has a grappling advantage as well. Yes, Robert Whitaker has good takedown defense, but when was the last time he fought a grappler like Hamza Shemaev. He probably never has. I mean, Yoel Romero took him down a couple of times, but he showed good takedown defense against Yoel Romero. But, I mean, that's been a long time. I want to say four or five years ago. 
So I just think Hamza Shemaev is going to be a bit too dangerous. Also, the fact that the fight is taking place at UFC Saudi Arabia, that's going to help Hamza Shemaev if the fight goes to the scorecards. It's kind of sad to say that, but let's be honest. When you watch some of these fights, you know that the judges are going to be a little bit biased. And whoever the UFC wants to win, that's typically who ends up winning. So I have to pick Hamza Shemaev, not only because of that, but because of the things I said. Look, I think he has more finishing potential. I think that at some point, he's going to be able to take this fight down to the mat. And even if he's not able to finish Robert Whittaker, I think that's going to, you know, kind of drop the confidence of Robert Whittaker. I also, I just rewatched Robert Whittaker's last couple of fights, and he doesn't fight with like this very high pace, uh, high output kind of fight. So I think because of that, that kind of lends itself for Hamza Shemaev to have a lot of success because if it was somebody like, I don't know, a Kobe Covington, I mean, I, I guess a prime version of Kobe Covington who had that pressure, non-stop cardio, who could maybe drown you. Okay, maybe that type of style could have success against a Hamza Shemaev even though Kobe doesn't have the best submission uh, defense and also is pretty chinny. Well, I mean, it's maybe a little bit similar to Robert Whitaker in that sense. Robert Whitaker probably has better takedown defense and better um, submission defense as well. But, I mean, I, I just, I don't trust Robert Whitaker's durability in this fight. And that's the main reason why I just have to pick Hamza Shemaev. Even though, like I said, every time Hamza Shemaev has a big test, he's yet to pass with flying colors. Look, the fight against Gilbert Burns was an amazing fight. But, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of hype. A lot of people lost faith in, in that fight because he wasn't able to finish a Gilbert Burns. Even people thought that Gilbert Burns had won the fight. It was a very competitive fight. I still thought Hamza Shemaya won two of those rounds, but he got dropped by a Gilbert Burns. And look, I know a lot of people underrate Gilbert Burns. I mean, he does have a lot of power, but he basically just has a right overhand and he doesn't have like amazing striking here. And I think that Robert Wicker definitely has the potential to make Hamza Shemaev look foolish on the feet. But like I said, I'm going to pick Hamza Shemaev. I think Robert Whitaker is a pretty good underdog if you want to bet some money. But I just have to go with Hamza Shemaev just because of the grappling threat, the grappling pace, um, the power on the feet. Yes, I'm a little bit worried because it's five rounds and I could definitely see Hamza Shemaev slowing down. But if Robert Whitaker isn't really able to step on the gas because he's worried about getting taken down or potentially Hamza Shemaev landing a jab or the power, potentially if Hamza Shemaev maybe drops him in those early rounds, I, I could see him being a little bit hesitant on the feet. And I think eventually Hamza Shemaev is going to be able to find the finish. So ultimately, guys, I just have to go with Hamza Shemaev to win this fight. Look, I understand why a lot of people are picking Robert Whitaker, and I always kind of like to root for the underdog here. I just think that Hamza Shemaev is a little bit too dangerous for Robert Whitaker in a five-round fight, and I just feel like at this point, Hamza Shemaev knows that it's make or break. And like I said, I am expecting a better version of Hamza Shemaev to show up to this fight. Robert Whitaker obviously has amazing takedown defense, and maybe he surprises me with his takedown defense. But I think if Hamza Shemaev was able to take down Kamar Usman, I just think he'll be able to take down Robert Whitaker and maybe find a submission. If not, you know, control him for a majority part of those rounds, land some ground and pound shots. And on the feet, I just think it's going to slow down Robert Whitaker because he's going to have to be worried about the takedowns, about potentially getting punched in the face. Because like I said, Hamza Shemaev, even though he's not the better striker in this fight in terms of volume, in terms of, you know, tools and, and being more creative on the feet, I definitely think that Hamza Shemaev has the power advantage. He has a solid jab, a good right hand, a good body kick, good head kicks so i just i just see a situation here where hamza shimaev is either i able to hurt him on the feet or you know take him down enough in that five round fight to either win a decision so i just think there's way too many paths for hamza shimaev to win this fight and i also think the ufc chose robert waker for a reason i think the ufc is very strategic with who they pick for Hamza Shemaev to fight because I really do believe that the UFC wants Hamza Shemaev to fight for the title because it's going to be a big fight, whether that be a Drikas Duplessis versus Hamza Shemaev or Hamza Shemaev versus Israel Asanya. It's going to be a massive fight, and I think the UFC has been waiting for Hamza Shemaev to actually get his title shot. I think that after his performance against Kamar Usman, the UFC wasn't really able to justify Hamza Shemaev getting a title shot because he basically went to a draw versus a short notice Kamar Usman. So, like I said, I have big expectations expectations for Hamza Shemaev going to this fight this is the last time that I'm gonna have big expectations this is make it or break it for me for based MMA in terms of what I think of Hamza Shemaev here but I'm gonna trust him in this matchup I just think that he edges out in some of those areas like the power the submission ability the grappling ability the grappling pace and I just think that Robert Whitaker 
He's an amazing middleweight, and definitely he could definitely fight for the title. I just don't think he's in his prime right now. I don't think he's in his prime anymore. And like I said, the blueprint to beat to beat uh, Robert Whitaker is already out there. I just have to go with Hamza Shemaev to win that fight. And I know the odds heavily favor Hamza Shemaev, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I, I kind of understand why Hamza Shemaev is that big of a favorite. Look, I think that if you just watch. Um, Hamza Shemaev's last fight, you would be like, okay, the odds are crazy. Like, why is Hamza Shemaev such a big favorite? But when you think of all the other factors, and I also, look, I'm going to give Hamza Shemaev a little bit of an excuse just because he hadn't fought in 13 months. You know, he fought at Kamar Usman on short notice. He was probably a little bit um, ring rust. You know, he kind of blew his load in that first round. So I think in this fight, he's going to pace himself a little bit better knowing that it's five rounds, knowing that if he can't submit uh, Robert, I was going to say Hamza Shemaev, if he can't submit Robert Whitaker early he still has to fight the rest of the fight so he doesn't want to blow his load that early so i think hamza shemaev is gonna do a better job of pacing himself in that fight and because of that i think he will ultimately win that fight but i want to know what you guys think who do you think is going to win this matchup robert whitaker or hamza shemaev let me know down in the comments below and, be and make sure to like and subscribe guys and i'll see you guys in the next one